I think results like this, especially, you know, you got first time guys on the boat finishing second here, you know, should get people's attention. Lumpy. Day one at 2011 Sperry Topside of Charleston Race Week. I'm Mr. Clean. This is the On the Water Anarchy Report, sponsored in part by J Boats, which is nice because here I am on a J boat, um, and uh, and this is a this is a J boat that a couple of people, a couple of hardcore racers have come up to me and said, "Is that really J boat?" I don't, I, at the end of the day, I think that's a compliment because this is a racy looking thing um, that goes fast and, and looks fast and uh, and uh, and is selling in massive numbers. Uh, the last last count, I was told, 60 boats sold. Um, I think something like six delivered, but 60 boats sold on four continents all over the world, um, countries all over the world. As, just so you know, in Charleston, it's evening. That means the no CMs are out. So if you see us hopping around, that's because there are things that you can't see eating us, eating our flesh. Anyway, um, but we wanted to do a walkthrough of this boat because there hasn't been a really good walkthrough yet of this J111. First of all, Dave Malkin, uh, uh, you're a broker down here in Charleston and you've been sailing on the boat here a little bit. This is our first race, obviously, and our first race day, I think. Right. Tell us a little bit about um, about what you, what kind of conditions you saw today and, uh, and uh, how the boat handled them. Well, we were looking at anywhere from 15 to 17 today, pretty lumpy, and uh, the boat oh. sailed really well. We were going well upwind. We're in a pretty tough group. Uh, two J122s, two J120s, an Archambault 40, uh, Beneteau 40.7, and uh, I thought for the most part the boat held uh, held its own. The 122s had a little bit of speed on us upwind in the in the chop today, but uh, on the on the whole, I thought we uh, we held our own with them pretty well. And the, rea and the reality is, is that I don't think anyone's really buying this boat to go handicap racing. Um, I'm sure it'll do fine in the distance races. We just had a great report from from the first boat uh, down doing the Cabo race. Um, but the reality is, is with 60 boats sold, we're going to see one design fleets pretty quickly. From what I understand, they tell me Chicago Mackinac is going to have a full one design fleet this year already. So right, six right. or seven boats, um, and then uh, and then hopefully down here we'll see that many uh, for next year's Charleston Race Week. Chicago has actually already been designated Fleet One. They have either eight boats. They have eight boats on order. I'm not sure what the total delivery is there of the 62 that are have been sold Annapolis which is actually where North Point's based out of where I'm based out of but we're down here kind of promoting the boat to the Charleston market we've got four boats sold so there's the the numbers are really picking up quickly and I think by 2012 you're really going to start to see one design fleets happen and as more boats get out on the water like this weekend I think you, you know people are starting to come by the boat they're seeing it seeing that it's a lot of fun seeing that it's easy to have fun on this boat and easy to go fast. So, so tell us, uh, when you buy a J111, what are you getting here? I mean, uh, obviously it's it's a pretty stripped out boat from the deck. It looks like a real clean deck plan, but why don't you just walk us through uh, some of the features that you think are, are pretty sexy? Sure, well the 111 is really nice in that you don't have to really spend a lot of time worrying about how you're gonna get the boat and how you're gonna configure it. Um, the basic boat that you see here, the carbon mast, the basic keel configuration, hull configuration, everything is the same. There's no options as far as that's concerned. It all just comes as a package. What we've tried to do, or what J-Boats has tried to do, is to make this thing as, as easy as possible to get the boats as, I guess, one design and even as possible. If um, you want to take a walk around, I can show you. Well, I mean, let's First start. All, we're, we're, we're hydraulic back all, here. Right, well, not, not just that spinning around. Not just that we have a hydraulic backstay, but your Sailtech hydraulic backstay has controls up forward here with the mast, with the um, main sheet controls. So your main sheet trimmer is up here and capable of handling the whole sail package, the so whole this, main sail package. So here's the backstay right. control So right backstay there. control is forward of the helm. Okay. The helm itself is a nice big oversized wheel. Really easy main sheet package here in this whole Harkin setup and that you've got fine tune and then of course you've got gross tune and the the guy P. Colby who's been on board uh, trimming Maine this weekend is finding it very easy to get the sail shape and, and, and to where he wants it with the boat. So from that perspective the main sheet system seems to be working out quite nicely. We've got the new style Harkin winches throughout the boat so those are playing out very well. Um, the, the, the jib trimmers, there was some commenting today about just how little effort is going into trimming the jib on the boat because the, the, 
the winch has come in so quickly and there's so a little amount of trim so that's been working out really well the tacks have been quite snappy i would say a pretty basic setup three of the of stopper cleats going to single winches up here one of the things that we are going to do that that we're sort of discovering and i'll put out there is that the the quattros are really probably a better fit on the boat because not because this winch can't handle it but when we're flying the kite and we're starting to take off the apparent wind's going forward so fast that we can't spin this winch yeah. fast enough which yeah. i think is a testament to the boat because it just wasn't something that people anticipated right. being an issue on the boats so that's one thing that we would i would say about the boat having sailed with her all day today is that the quattros would be better but these winches have been working fantastic Fair um we've got your uh, in hauler systems on board uh, cross sheeted in hauler so that we can bring it in we've been finding that we're running the the jib in maybe about two inches inside the um, handrails there okay. and that's been working out fantastic again jib trimmers having you know no trouble getting the sail shape set the way they want it okay the jib trim side of things and what you're showing seeing is the the lead setup and you've got a very easy uh, adjustable lead setup. No blocks, no turning blocks or anything necessary for the jibs. So we just come through the, the lead block and then straight back through that Harkin Fair lead system. That's been working out very well. Yeah, this is the, the in-hauler system. And as I was saying before, you'd see what we're doing is we're cross sheeting these mm -hmm. so that we can get additional angle up onto the deck. Because what we found is initially when we had them run just through the, um, the the organizer down low, we didn't get enough. Get right, the, the, the yeah. sail plan actually wanted even more, so we right. went ahead and did that. Got it. So you've got your haul quick fang system, which seems to work out pretty well, as you would expect. Pretty sexy instrument package. Yeah, right? we're running with some Occam instrument package that we've got here. Um, uh, is that, is that, that carbon whistle. bracket part of the package, uh, or is that something that, aftermarket? That, that, that would definitely be aftermarket. <laughs> <laughs> Can ask the owner. That was an aftermarket. That's pretty nice. Yeah, and that was all put together by the guys at Custom Offshore for us up right. in Jersey. Right on. So, and that's uh, that's been working out pretty well so far. Although, as anybody that's ever used Occam's would know, it's a process. Right. right. So, and we're going through that. Yeah. So, rig, carbon rig, haul spars, nice and stiff. It's been working out really well so far today. Um, the the setup has been just fine. It's not very little flexing on it. They're getting just the amount of bend that they want in it. So it seems to be responding well to backstay and uh, various shroud adjustments. Now one of the new fan core, um, what do you call it, the um, web style roller furlers. And so far, that's actually working very nicely. Um, we, you know, everybody wasn't sure about you know having to go from the web to the line and pulling it through, but it's actually worked out so quite nicely. So it's got this barrel swivel here to keep it from twisting, right? And uh, supposedly really smooth operation, huh? Yeah, very smooth so far. No, no problems at all with that uh, piece of hardware. I think that's going to work out very well for the boats. Excellent. And that's right. all one design spec. That is all the one design spec coming out of J boats. That's how it comes. There's eight foot of bowsprit on this thing. So your, our, the, the spinnakers are 138 square meters kites, which is 1,500 square feet. That's a big kite. It's a, it's a really big kite for this size boat. So Definitely looks like a J boat, but um, a few things that, that jump out right off the bat. I know for me, uh, having done a lot of work fixing boats, um, I detest headliners, and I love seeing right. stainless bolts and, uh, and, and, and you know, you need to fix something, you just unscrew it. That's nice. Um, right. Was that a big decision for J-Boats to go to? Because most of the boats do have headliners. Uh, I, I think that it was, and I think it was all part of the concept of keeping this boat very clean and very simple, um, real easy to manage and maintain for owners. And I think, I think importantly, you know, to have a, a, a boat that's only 9,000 pounds um, at this size, uh, and still have headroom, you can't have all that extra weight and, and headliners weigh a lot. And uh, Well, you know, there's another aspect to it and and I know that you're getting some video of it, but if you look at the quality of the, the gel coat work on the inside of the liner, that's part of it is that you have to be working with a builder that's capable of doing that. Right. And the builder that we have working with us that's building these boats in Bristol is obviously capable of that level of work. Right, so so we'll do a little, a little feature check here. We obviously got uh, a little galley 
with a two burner stove, some pre, you know pretty standard stuff, uh, a forward facing nav station. Uh, with uh, the the obligatory MacBook Pro, which I think you know, is the important accessory of the day. Um, but what else do we got here? I mean, what what, what makes this an offshore worthy boat? Because I know a lot of people are buying it for that. Sure. Well, some of the things that make it offshore worthy, aside from actually having a galley and a nav station, is you've got the two quarter berth setup, which is behind, as well as sea berth packages. So we've got on the sides here capability of having four in. Oh, having four in crew of course sleeping and there's one on that side so you've got four in crew and adjustable sea berths of course there's lee cloths to go with and um, you know this makes th this area very livable for an offshore race uh, our plan is to take this boat in the annapolis newport race and we're going to do that with seven on board. So it should be very easy and manageable inside the boat that way. Got it, got it. Um, we've got, uh, aside from the quarter burst, we also have a really simple uh, companionway setup. None of the heavy wood stairway, just the, just the actual steps coated in wood, which is nice. Um, also, aside from the headroom and sort of, Petey, maybe you should take a shot of me. You know, my head's hitting here. When I'm fully standing up, my head's hitting. I'm 6'2", and, and frankly, like this is pretty good for any J-boat uh, that I've been on. So we'll poke up forward here, Dave, and uh, we've got a head up here. And uh, Dave was talking a minute ago, in fact, about how long this bowsprit is. we got a full eight foot of bowsprit here. Um, and, um, ooh. but nice clean sail locker, and again, nice textured, um, uh, textured interior here on the hull. And this this uh, this top is really nice. I can't tell you how much I love not having a headliner. Um, we also got we've got we got the Occam processor all the way up here forward, um, a big rope locker and a hang locker. I guess it could be as well. Um, and this simple head. But I mean, this is it. This is a simple boat, and this is going to be an offshore and inshore one design boat. And we really do expect to see some pretty big fleets next year. I certainly would expect to see, you know, five or ten here next year at Charleston Race Week. We'd certainly love to have them again. Um, but. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm pretty impressed, um, you know, in terms of uh, seeing her out on the water and move. Uh, the boat seems really quick. You guys say that you're rolling up on 40 footers pretty easily, and uh, that's always nice. Um, but um, it'll be interesting to see how it all develops. Uh, we just want to see, a, we just want to see a, another good class develop. There are classes sort of going away, and uh, it's nice to have a replacement from someone as respected as J-Boats, and certainly the, the, the public is, is jumping on it, right? Agreed. I think it's with 62 boats sold already, I think the, the public is answering with their pocketbook that they like what they see here. Yeah, fair enough. Well, hey, Dave, I really appreciate your time. Check out what, NorthPointYachtSales.com? Absolutely. All right, check out NorthPointYachtSales.com. They can help you out with your new J111 or any J-boat. And uh, check out jboats.com to learn more about this uh, sexy thing. And we'll see you out on the water here uh, uh, tomorrow. We, we might not be able to get it out tomorrow either because uh, we're getting killed on the power boats. But certainly Sunday looks like a lighter day, and we'll see if we get some in action. Uh, but thank you again. You guys uh, go go fast tomorrow, and uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Cheers. Appreciate it. Hey, nice yeah. to meet you, Dave. Nice to meet you. Ten, it's 12. 12. 10, it's 12. And I can stand up inside? No, I'll tell you. I'm still in there.